In part one, we demonstrated linking codes to quotations, both manually and also with autocoding. In part two, we complete codes as components by demonstrating the different ways to organize codes and then review the actions specific to codes, linking codes to memos as well as to quotations, linking codes to other codes with a relation, grouping codes into code groups in order to filter, and finally, interrogating codes. Codes in Atlas TI do not come pre-organized in any way. They come in a simple alphabetical listing, as you can see here, and all have the same status from a technical point of view. Any organizing is done by you, based on the needs of your analytic tasks. This is a great advantage of Atlas TI, putting all control of the organizing of codes and the development of coding schemes in your hands, rather than providing any auto-organizing tools that would not be in the spirit of 5-level QDA, which wants to keep strategies and tactics clearly distinct. Page 82 describes how you can take advantage of the four ways currently available for organizing codes, an increasing order of sophistication, coloring codes, using prefixes, putting codes into code groups or smart groups, and linking codes with named relations. We'll just look at the mechanics here, and I'll start with the simplest organizing tool to use colors. In this project, whenever the interviewees were referring to their clients' attitudes rather than their own attitudes, I coded their quotations to the code client in addition to the other codes that I used. And I could draw attention to this by making this code, say, red. And now, whenever I see that code, it's going to show up in reports and in the margin area as red. For example, I'll retrieve all the quotations for this code and go to just one. And you'll see here that the ones that have client associated with it show up with a red tinge. If I print out a report of all the quotations attached to the code client, you'll see that there's a color coding there as well. No actions can be taken on these various colors, other than serving as visual clues, so that's why it's the most straightforward way to provide some kind of organization. Here's a project that uses the colors in a more comprehensive way. This is the case illustration project from Chapter 8, Elizabeth Pope's Dissertation Literature Review. Here Liz has not used the colors to tag or highlight certain codes, but to assign a color to every code in the category. She did this because these colors conveniently correspond to similar color markings she uses in her hard copies of the literature. We can also see she's used the second way of organizing codes, prefixes. A prefix refers to the first one or several characters or letters of the code name. Here she used an abbreviation of the category name, which served to group the codes in the categories in the code list, rather than having them all in one long list in strict alphabetical order. So these are the codes for adult learning theory. These are all the codes for the challenges. She used both ways to organize her codes, both colors and prefixes, because she used them for different purposes. The colors to match the individual codes to her hard copies, and the prefixes to organize the presentation of the list of codes in these convenient groups. Here's a project that uses symbols rather than abbreviated names as the prefixes of the codes. This is convenient when you have sets of codes that serve specialized purposes, because the symbols sort before letters or numbers, and so putting symbols as the first character allows these groups of codes to sort at the top of the code list completely separately from the alphabetical set of codes. This is a project about elder abuse. There are several sets of codes here that serve as tags that we use to code the quotations of the elderly patients. For example, the exclamation point is for various types of abuse, such as feeling unsafe, financial abuse, neglect, and so on. The pound sign is used for placeholder codes that are used for model building purposes in this project. These codes are not attached to quotations, but they are linked to other codes. They're like headings that are used in the networks. Here is a network to show what I mean. You can see that the codes that have a pound sign in front of them are serving as headers for the various parts of this model. And the codes that do not have pound signs, those are the ones that are linked to quotations, the conceptual codes. There's another group of codes here, starting with the dollar sign. These distinguish when the patient was talking about their own experience, 
or maybe they were talking about the second person experience of people they knew, or in some cases they were simply talking in the third person, expressing their opinions that weren't really related to their own experiences. Partway through this study, we realized we needed to distinguish these, and so we set up these three codes as tags. And after all these symbol prefixes come the alphabetical list of conceptual codes. I'll close the code list, and we can see this quotation is coded to a set of codes. Two types of abuse, verbal abuse and emotional cruelty. This indicates that the patient is talking about their own experience and the abuse was from the neighbor. This code with a hyphen in front of it is the status of their abuse. And these are two conceptual codes indicating that they were experiencing personal conflict and in some way it related to the police or the justice system. Using a coding scheme like this allows many different interrogations of the coded quotations based on just the conceptual coding or with or without consideration of each quotation's coding to the various sets of tagging codes indicated by the symbols. Coming back to the literature review project, we can now move on to the third way to bring organization to the codes, and that's through code groups. Here, in addition to organizing the codes by giving the code names prefixes, and also by color coding them, Liz also created code groups. Each of these groups can be clicked on in order to filter and just see that group of codes. Code groups and code smart groups work exactly the same as document groups and document smart groups, which I discussed in the component orientation video on groups. The final way to bring organization to codes is to link them together in order to form a higher level organization of a group of codes. This is generally done in the context of displaying groups of linked codes in a network. In this project, we have one network which displays a set of 10 codes that have been linked together. We'll go into linking codes and displaying them in networks in much greater detail in the component orientation on networks. Finally, let's look at the actions specific to codes. We've already discussed linking codes to quotations. Codes can be linked to memos in a similar way. We just discussed linking codes together with a relation, which we'll look into in more detail in the video on networks. We've discussed groups in this video and much more extensively in the video on groups and smart groups. Now we can discuss the different ways that we can filter the list of codes in order to focus attention on some rather than others. I'll open the code manager again. And we've already seen how we can filter the list of codes using the code groups. For example, if I click on dialogue theory with 10 codes, I'll only see those 10 codes. However, there are other ways to filter the code list. If I go to the view menu, you'll see here under filter that there are more than one way to filter the codes. First of all, I will remove this filter, meaning codes in the dialogue theory group. So now I'm seeing all the codes. I come to filter and maybe I want to see just the codes that have comments. And here they are. And each of these codes has a tilde sign there and text below indicating that a comment has been written on that code. And there's one final feature that you can invert the filter to see the opposite. In other words, all the codes that do not have comments. And here we see that Liz has written a comment on every single code and there are no codes without comments. All that remains is interrogating codes or following up on the work we have done so far with codes. The primary areas to interrogate are which quotations have been linked to a code, which we cover in the next component, coded quotations. And secondly, to interrogate the quotations linked to combinations of codes, which we cover in the next component after that, smart codes. We invite you to read about those two components in chapter five and then watch their component orientation videos.